Hey, we are uh, kind of a one-of today. We're starting a new series next week. We're going to be doing uh, First Peter, and First Peter deals with end times. I'm going to encourage you to come back for that. I'm really excited about going through the book of First Peter, line by line, verse by verse. We're going to go through it. I think we really need to get accustomed to the Bible. Now, we just saw the, uh, the coming attraction here, refocus, right? And refocusing is so important because if we don't focus, we get, ready, unfocused. No, but seriously, I think a lot of us have had our eyes on the wrong thing this past year, have we not? Yeah, we've, we've been worried about a lot. It's been a crazy, crazy 2020, and 2021 has uh, really gone off to a roaring start, hasn't it? Yeah, so what do we do in 2021? How do we live their life? How do we get ourselves refocused? How do we get ourselves in tune to what God is doing? Because I think a lot of us need a good tune-up. In fact, I, I want to just uh, show you a little illustration for a few moments. I, I, I do play guitar. At least I try to play guitar. And uh, this is a guitar, in case you're wondering. It's got six strings. And so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to just give you a little illustration about guitar. You want to mute me for a second when I plug this in. And uh, so what happens is, you know, I like to sing a song. And so in order to sing a song, you want to tune the guitar up to six strings. You have to be in tune. So I'm going to go ahead and just... I don't know if you guys can hear that. Can you hear that? That doesn't sound too good, does it? It's out of tune. And so what happens is, often when there's stretching in our lives, and you think about it, these different strings represent maybe your spiritual life, your family life, your work life, your physical life, your mental life, your mental wife. No, I'm just kidding. But it has the different things, our mental husband. But it, it, all these, these different strings, and what happens is when there's stretching going on, it goes out of tune. And so what can happen as a guitar player sometimes is you can say, oh, it's out of tune. So let me tune it up. So I'll just go like this. It's a little, let me see how it is, like a little flat. Oh, it's sharp. So I get in tune here. So what I'm doing is on this, I, I think this is E. I think this is E. Cool. So now I play a chord. Doesn't sound too good, does it? See what happens? I'm trying to figure it out. And a lot of times we do that in our life. We try to figure things out, but you start playing, you know? You start singing a song. Whoa. Like that. You're, okay, that sounds good. I, I'm in tune now. I'm, I'm good to go. And, and so what I've done is I've tuned up based on what I think the right tuning is and the right, you know, I think this is E. Here we go. So now I'm feeling pretty good about myself. You know, I'm tuned up pretty good, and I got a song I want to sing, and this is how I, I like it this way. It's easier to sing this way. I'm gonna, and I'm going to ask my friend John, the uh, worship director here at Cornerstone Church, if he could come out. We're going to do a song together. Uh, we've been to Nashville, and we got a recording contract together, and I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I, but, you know, so. I sing praises to you. Ready? Ready? Key G, please. Ready? G. Go try it. I sing praises to your name, oh Lord. Now, okay, that sounds terrible, does it not? Okay, there's a problem here. I think this is E, but it's not. I think it's, what, what, what is it, John? It's D. No, 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 it's E, because I think it's E, and I've tuned my guitar based upon that. But the problem is John has a keyboard that's tuned to 440, which is a frequency. Okay, John, thank you so much. It's a frequency, and that, thank you, thank you. And that frequency is what you are to tune to. The problem is, many of us think we understand what it's like, and what's happened to the church is, we've tuned our instruments, our opinions, and our lives based upon what we think is the right tune, and the world hears that. What do we have to do? We have to submit ourselves to the true tuning of heaven. God has a song for us to sing to a world that desperately needs it. And so what we have to do is literally I have to tune myself to that and bring it up to actually what E is instead of D and then tune every string. And what I often will have to do as well is put a tuner on top of the guitar and when I'm in between songs, I'll, I'll look at my strings and make sure I'm still in tune because what happens is with the stretching that you go out of tune. Have you noticed how we've been out of tune as a culture with all the stretching we've gone through? 
And so what we have to do is we have to submit ourselves to the ultimate 440, to the ultimate tuning. You may go ahead and take this out. To the ultimate tuning. And the problem we have, everybody, is that each of us think we know what's going on. But the only way we're going to refocus is we have to focus on the right tuning. We have to focus on the right frequency. If we're going to live a song and have a song that the world wants to hear, who wants to listen to a song like that? And that's been the problem, everybody. You see, opinions is not what we need to live by. We need to live by God's word, which is unchanging and unmoving. And so I want to talk about that today and how we can tune up our lives to the kingdom of heaven. The only way we're going to be able to tune up our lives is we have to walk with God. We have to walk with God. What does that mean, walk with God? We're going to talk about it in a few moments. But there's a great missionary. He was born in 1900 from China. I'm going to just go ahead and just do his first name because I don't think I can speak the Chinese one properly. So I'm going to call him Wang. Wonderful man of God, born in 1900. Died in 1991. In 1950, in communist China, he was locked up from 1950 to 1980, and he was tortured for his faith because he would not relent. He would not bow his knee to any other, any other God than Jesus Christ. And my friends, it could very well be in our lifetime that we might happen to us here in this country, in the world. And so what happened was there was an author in a book called Faith That Endures by Ronald Boyd McMillan, he actually interviewed Wang, and he wanted to figure out, as he wrote about his life, it's a fascinating life, you can read about it, don't do it right now, and go on Amazon Books or something like that and, and download it, but it's really, really good. He had a conversation with him, and so he wanted to interview Wang, but Wang would not let him interview him. Instead, Wang interviewed the author, the Chinese pastor. He said the following, young man, how do you walk with God? He's like, uh, okay. He says, well, I... I listed off some, I'm, I'm quoting him, I list off a set of disciplines such as Bible study and, and prayer and memorizing scripture, which he mischievously said, wrong answer. To walk with God, you must go at a walking pace. I'm afraid of us, we've been so busy with so many things that we're not at a walking pace with God. We, can we even hear what he's saying? Or are we too interested in what's being said on the line? In fact, uh, the, the author goes on to say, and one of the keys, and this is what they found from the persecuted church, one of the keys is this. God does things slowly. He works with the heart. We're too quick. We have so much to do, so much. In fact, we never commune with God as he's intended. When we cr we're created in even, Eden, excuse me, we are called to walk with God, but we're not walking with God. We're walking with what we think God wants us to do instead of with God. I don't know about you, everybody, but in 2021, I want to walk with God. I'm tired of walking my own way. In fact, it brings us to a wonderful passage of Scripture. In the book of Genesis, there's a tremendous man by the name of Enoch. Enoch is an amazing man of God. There's only two people in Scripture that never saw death. Even Jesus died. Moses' body was, 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 um, was buried. However, there's two people in the Bible that never saw death. They were raptured from this earth. The first one was Enoch. The second one was Elijah. Some people think those are the two witnesses that come back in the last days. Find out when 1 Peter comes around. And so it was an amazing, we can learn from Enoch today. And we're going to look at Enoch, and Enoch walked with God. I don't know about you, but I want to walk with God. When Enoch had lived 65 years, he became the father of Methuselah. Now, there's two different Enochs. There's an Enoch from Cain's line, which is a sinful line, and Seth. And so here's that godly line. When Enoch had lived 65 years, he became the father of Methuselah. Methuselah, by the way, he was the oldest man ever recorded in history. He lived 969 years. Imagine that. So Enoch had some kids. He had Methuselah. After he became the father of Methuselah, Enoch walked faithfully with God 300 years and had other sons and daughters. Check this out. Altogether, Enoch lived a total of what? 365 years. How many days are in a year? 365. It's not by an accident the Bible records it that way. I don't believe. So Enoch walked with God 
for 365 years. How about in 2021, we walk with God for 365 days? Instead of a New Year's resolution, why don't we have a new New Year's resolution every single day? And Enoch walked with God. Enoch walked faithfully with God. Then he was no more because God took him away. And by the way, when Enoch was living, the world was getting wicked. It was getting horrible. People were killing each other and hating each other. And there was all kinds of sin taking place. But Enoch walked with God. In Hebrews chapter 11, it goes on to talk about Enoch a little bit and gives us a summary of his life. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death. Wouldn't that be awesome? Listen, everybody, I'm not afraid to die, but I'm afraid how I'll die. <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't know about you, but I, I'm all right dying, but I'm afraid how I'll die. Think about this. How would you like to never see death? Wouldn't that be awesome? And that's what happened to Enoch. He did not see death, and it was not found because God had taken him for be. Before he was taken, he had this testimony. He wasn't living a quiet Christian life by himself because Christianity wasn't even invented yet. But he had a relationship with God. He had a testimony. In other words, he actually let people know about his faith. In these last days, everybody, it's not for us to lock the doors in the church and gather in a group and say, come, Lord Jesus, come quickly. We are to go out and to save as many people and be a witness to people as we can, not by hardy, arrogant people, but people who walk with God. He had a testimony that he pleased God. My question is, I hope this is true. I hope my testimony, how I walk with God, the people see I please God. I hope the same thing for you. I think God would have that for us today. And if you look at Enoch and you see what he's done, and it goes on and the Bible says, this is the genealogy of Noah. Go back to Genesis. Noah was a just man. Noah, by the way, Noah's great-grandfather was Enoch. So when you walk faithfully to God, it is a testimony and it sets up future generations to walk with God. The Bible says he blesses to a hundred generations for those who love him and fear him. And so now you have Noah, who is his great grandson. This is a genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generation. Noah walked with God. And the Hebrew word for walk means communion means sharing the same purpose and vision in the course of life. So walking with God is, means I am walking with God. I am walking in concert with him. In Hebrews 11, 5 through 7, says this, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And so this is the context we go to here. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, Move with godly fear. Prepare the ark for the saving of his household. Uh, I, I don't know if you realize this, guys, but we've been divinely warned about things coming. We've been divinely warned that in the last days there will be wars and rumors of wars. There'll be pestilence around the country and around the world. Have you noticed this pestilence, this COVID thing, has affected everyone? Even in Amazon rainforest communities are being affected by it. And I do believe this is a shot across the bow of our life as a warning sign because more is coming. And we have to be ready for what's going to be taking place. There's going to be persecution. The Bible says in the last days, the love of many will grow cold. Do we not see that, everybody? When you can hate someone like that, the love, and it says parents, kids will be disobedient to their parents. And all these things, we can see it happening. And so Noah and his generation was getting ready for it. He built an ark, and we're building an ark too. It's called the church. And God is bringing people to us. But what happens if they come to us and we're arguing over Donald Trump? Enough. Enough, everybody. Why are we arguing about that? Donald Trump, Joe Biden, whoever else. I don't care. What a bad witness that is. Do we need to vote? Yes. Do we need to vote for? Yes, yes. We're not, that's not about it. But our loyalty is to Almighty God. For being divinely warned of things not yet seen, move with godly fear, prepare the ark for saving his household. This should be about proclaiming the kingdom of God with humility, realizing if not for God, none of us could stand. We have to stop being arrogant. Those people are in it. Please, do we really need that, everybody? Please, do we really need that? Listen to this. An ark for the saving of his household. 
by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which according to the faith. So we are to build an ark. We are to proclaim. We are to tell people that there's a day coming. Get right with God. You're destroying yourself. Why? We, in order to do that, you can't walk with the Republican Party. You can't walk with the Democratic Party. You gotta walk with Jesus Christ. You gotta walk the path that God has for you. What does it mean to walk with God? How do you walk with God? Great, thank you. I need to walk with God. That helps me a lot. Now I can go home. What'd you learn today? I gotta walk with God. What does that mean? I'm so glad you asked, <laughs> okay? What does it mean to walk with God? Here it is. Don't live for God. It's impossible. My friends, the problem with the church and the problem with us these last couple years is that we've been living for God, not with God. You see, this is the deal. We must live with God, not for God. Because you can live with God, and you can live with God is a lot different than listening, living for God. If I live for God, I'm living for God. We've got to vote for righteousness. And the Bible says in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, and I can quote the scripture verse, I can talk about righteousness exalts a nation, and, and you need to save, I can quote all these scriptures, but I'm not walking with God, I'm walking for God. And if I'm walking for God, I can have the wrong way and the wrong thing of doing. You see, the problem is this. You can walk f for God and quote scriptures. You can walk for God and claim righteousness. But guess what? God's like, where am I? I'm not with you. Yeah, but Jesus, I'm doing it for you. Jesus, I'm going to vote for a candidate that will save America. God, I'm going to vote for this person. God's like, you're not walking with me. You're walking for me. You see, we must live with God, not for God. It's a vast difference, everybody. You see, this is the truth. Church, Christianity, is a toxic without Jesus. When it becomes about Christianity without Jesus, look out. I'm not God, and neither are you. We're, I hate to tell you, everybody, look at your neighbor and say, you're a screw-up without God. You are. You need Jesus, and so do I, every day. We're not called to walk alone. You're not designed to walk this life without God. Adam and Eve said, hey, excuse me, God, we want to be like you, but we don't want to serve you. And that's what happened. And that's what happens to us, God. We want to be like you. We want to tell you, God, what you should be doing. This is who we should have. Oh, the country's over because of this person and this. We have all of these things we say, but we must live with God, not for God. You see, when you live with God, you live for him. Vast difference, everybody. You see, what does the Bible say in Amos? Can two walk together unless they are agreed? So you and I are walking this way, and we're quoting scriptures, and everything we're saying is, is in the Bible. It's correct. Mm -hmm. That's great. But God's not walking with us. God's like, I'm going this way. Can two walk together unless they're agreed? The only way you and I can walk with God is we're going to have to walk his way, not our way. My ways are higher than your ways, says the Lord. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts, says the Lord. So we have to be willing to walk God's way, not our own way, and humble ourselves. And this is what Enoch did. You know what Enoch did, everybody? This is what Enoch did. Enoch walked faithfully. And the connotation of that is he did it on a continuous, ongoing basis. He walked faithfully with God. Then he was what? As I say, no more. Because God took him. You my friends, what we need to do? We need to walk with God and become no more. No more. When you become no more, you can become more. When you and I become no more, we can become more. When it's about my likes, what I want, it's not about me. And John the Baptist said this, he, I must decrease, he must increase. And the only way God is going to show himself in my family, your family, and in this church is we and I become no more so he can become more. And that's what Enoch did. Enoch walked with God. He was no more about himself. You see, when you're about yourself, you get frustrated. Yeah, it happens all the time. I've done, I'm pastoring this church, I'm working hard, and no one appreciates me. I prayed for the election, and I didn't get what I wanted, or I did get what I wanted. And it's all about what I want. Jesus says this, you are the light of the earth. Let your light shine that men will see your good works 
and glorify God. What we do is we do our good works so man will glorify us. I'm right. How dare you defy me? And that's the problem. Our ego gets in the way. I'm telling you right now, I'm the most miserable person in the world when I look to get my accolades from people. No, I do my good works so people know God. If I go to the Grand Canyon and I look at the, I wish I'd been there, it's beautiful. I go, wow, this is beautiful. Thank you, God. The Grand Canyon doesn't go, hey, I'm the one that's awesome here, not God. No, what happens is the Grand Canyon, the beauty of the Grand Canyon, the beauty of a sunset, the beauty of the ocean, what does it do? It declares the glory of God and you give glory back to God. Our objective should be so beautiful to, with our actions and how we act that people go, what an incredible God you have. The problem is we want to be cool. We want to be liked. We want to be considered smart. And that creates tension. That creates jealousy. That can create comparisons, which never works out well. It's so much better to say, you know what? It's not about me. I want to do good work so I glorify God. We can appreciate each other. Do you see the difference, everybody? So when you become no more, you can become more. And the funny thing is, this sets you free. Most of the anxiety you have is you're worrying what someone else thinks about you. Hello? You're worrying what someone else thinks about you or how you compare to somebody else. You're trying to tune your guitar to a different, and God says, don't forget about that. Tune it to me. And when it's all about the kingdom of heaven, when you're no more, you can become more. Then God's like, I can finally trust someone with my power and my glory and my authority because they're not going to use it to destroy themselves. They're going to use it to glorify me. And as a result, they're going to be lifted up high because I created you to flourish. God wants you to flourish. But you can't flourish without him or else you do damage to yourself and damage to everybody else. So... When you become no more, you can become more. You know, the Apostle Paul says this, as we're going to wrap this up in a few moments. I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I, I, who live. Basically, he's saying, I've been crucified with Christ. I am no more. He is more. That's what he's saying, right? But Christ lives in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That's what Jesus says, by the way. He says this, and he said to them, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself. The only way you can be more is to become no more. And the only way that can happen, you have to deny yourself and take up your cross once in your life. I'm sorry, it doesn't say that, does it? What does it say? Daily. We talked about tuning the guitar. When you play the guitar, you gotta tune it between songs. You gotta tune it every day or it's gonna be out of tune. And God wants us to walk with him, not for him. If we're walking for him, we go out of tune, everybody. You see, this is what it says in 1 John 2, 6. He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk like Jesus has walked. Are we walking with Jesus where people can see Christ with us? I don't know about you, everybody, but it's very easy for me to come on a Sunday morning. Not easy, but it's easier to come on a Sunday morning, pray up, and, and the worship team, John and I, we all, we all pray up. We come here. We're, we're trying to listen to the Holy Spirit as we lead worship, as we preach, and we're doing that right now. But what happens when I go back home and something goes wrong? Am I still walking in? No, I walk in Eric. I do. I do. And I want to, I don't know about you, but I want to be God consciousness. I want to walk with God in the ordinary things of life. Doesn't mean we walk around like this. Blessed be the Lord. Doesn't mean we walk around like some monastic uh, lemon sucker. No. It means, you know, Isaac, the first child of promise, his name is laughter. In, in Christ, there's, la there's laughter, there's life, right? How about we try and not try, we be, make a choice to walk with God in the ordinary things so they can become extraordinary. Jesus says the following, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides, walking with, abides, living with, in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. You see, that's the problem. We can do a lot, but it really means nothing. If anything you do for yourself is both here and now, but you can't take it with you. Whatever you do for God, you experience now and forevermore. I don't want to go to heaven and God goes, great performance, but it was all about you. 
There are people, I'm convinced, you never hear about on this planet. It could be an old woman from South Dakota that gets paid her pension and gives 20% away to missions and prays for people, and she'll be more celebrated in heaven than some shiny, great evangelist. Well, how do we walk with God? We must live with God, not for God. And when you become no more, you can become more. I don't know about you. Are you willing to do that today? Let's take a moment. Let's, let's pray about this. Father, I, I just thank you so much, God, that your word is true. And, and Lord, um, I'll just speak for myself. Lord, often it is not about you. It's about me. And it's been about us, Lord God. Lord, we want to become no more so you can become more in our lives, oh God. We want to walk with you, God. Father, we don't want to walk for you. We don't want to live for you. We want to live with you. God, I pray you'd bring such a beautiful unity to this church that people would come off and see all sorts of different people from different backgrounds and ethnicities, different political persuasions, yet they all love Jesus. They all love you. And we're willing to listen to each other, and correct each other, and bless each other, and admonish each other. And Father, that we would be branches, vine branches connected to you, and that we would grow with fruit. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that we would change our lives and become more like you. In Jesus' name. Amen. I just want to say a few other things as we, as we conclude today. The Bible says in Hosea 10, 12, sow for yourselves righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground. It's time to hear the Lord. It's time to seek the Lord. The only way you and I can really change is we got to break some things in our lives. we got to break our routines. we got to break ourselves and humble ourselves and let the seeds of God change us from the inside out. Break up your fallow ground for it's time to seek the Lord till he comes and rains righteousness on you. Listen, the reason why we're doing 21 days is not just because we've been doing it every year. It's really an opportunity to break up that fallow ground. It's an opportunity to take a time to break your routine and to seek God. And when, when we talk about, I really pray that we would pray and fast. Don't fast and pray. Sometimes I found this through the years. It's all about the fast. Listen, I could, use, I could have minus... COVID-22. I could use a minus COVID-20. Actually, I, I never mind. We'll talk about that later. But we want to be able to spend time with the Lord. What we're doing is every day we're meeting. We're a little bit different this time. We're going an hour later from Monday through Friday from 7 to 8 a.m. We're going to be here live praying for our country. This week is going to be about getting in tune with different areas of our lives. And we'll be meeting here 7 to 8 a.m. We'll be doing a live it will be on demand as well if you want to have your lunch hour or whatever and take time to pray and seek God together. We're going to do it for 21 days. And I want to call you to, to fast. There's different types of fast. And one way is a total fast just with water. And if you're going to do that, make sure you you're, talk to your doctor and all that if you want to do something like that. Another way is a partial fast. Maybe a fast lunch or dinner or you fast breakfast uh, or something like that. Or maybe you do a Daniel fast, 21 days where he ate vegetables and water. Maybe fast meats and sweets. And the reason you do this, by the way, you don't do it just to do it. You do it because you want to submit yourself. You want to starve the flesh to feed the spirit. And perhaps, I think most of us are fine with these three, but this one we're going to have a hard time with. Here's a, are you ready for you ready for the ones really hard to do? Yeah, fast of media, and uh, well, I don't watch TV anymore. Yeah, no one watches TV in my house. They watch this. How about we maybe don't post anything for a while? Whoa! How about we don't like let's just not read the news for a couple of weeks? How about that, everybody? How about we say instead of spending so much time arguing who's right and who's wrong and how bad things are, why not just say you know what? I'm going to give a break from this. And I'm going to spend that time with the Lord. I want to encourage you to do that, everybody. And let God change your lives. You know, before we leave here today, I'm going to just challenge you one more thing. How are you with Jesus Christ? If you were to die today, I ask this question. It's the most important question I will ask. If you were to die today, do you know absolutely for sure you would go to heaven and be with God forever? And you say, you know what? Compared to the, I know some Christians that act like trash, so I guess I'll be able to go. <laughs> No, that's not what it is, everybody. There's only one way you're right with God. It's not by good behavior. It's by giving your life to Jesus Christ. 
Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of God's standard. There's not one that's righteous, no, not one. But God loved us so much that he gave us Christ. And whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. What I want to encourage you today is get right with God. Today, all he's asking for you to do is to surrender to him. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes and lead you in a prayer. If you want to pray this prayer, you can begin. And just so I know better how to pray and encourage you and, and give you a point of faith, how many would say today, Pastor, I used to walk with God, but I'm not walking with God anymore, and I want to get right with Him. Or maybe I've never completely surrendered my life. There was always one thing I held out, but today I'm going all in. Just so I can see, I can pray for you. Just say, Pastor, that's me. Yes, anyone else? Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Today would say, I want to give, I want to go all in. Okay, let's pray. Pray this prayer inside of your heart. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you rose again from the dead. I ask you right now to forgive me of everything I've ever done wrong, both known and unknown. And right now, I choose to step down from being the boss of my life. This is no longer my life. I've become no more, so you can become more in me. Take my life and use it the way you'd want it to. Help me now, Lord, to continue to, to grow in you in Jesus' name. Thank you that I am now your child. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, everybody, we believe you began a journey with God. Jesus says, come, follow me. And one of the ways we do that, there's connection cards in the front pocket of the seat in front of you. You can pull one out. Say, I'm making a decision to give myself to Christ today. If you're watching online or if you're here, you can text BEGIN. You get your phone out and you text and you text 94090, and you write the word begin. We'll give you some prompts to help you with your next steps. Listen, we're not better than anybody else. We're on the road the same as you are, but God has good plans for us, and it's our job to help each other become more like Jesus Christ, and that's what's going on. Okay, everybody, if you could go ahead and do that, that'd be great, and before we leave here today, you don't have to give. You get to give. There's no pressure involved at all, but the Bible, I'm telling you right now, you want, to, you, want to, you want financial success. Here's spend less than you can make. Spend less than you make. Tithe 10% and be generous, and God will bless you. It works, everybody. And so we believe in giving to the local place where you, you come to church, and so we love you to be able to do that. You can uh, text Cornerstone Church to 77977, Cornerstone Cheshire. You can go to online, cornerstonecheshire.com. You can also, if you're here, which you are, most of you are predominantly. You can put your envelopes in the back boxes. There's envelopes in front. Thank you so much. Let's pray for the offering. Father, I just thank you. You're the God that supplies all of our needs. I ask you would supply every need. We're thanking you right now that we're able to have missionaries around the world spreading your word. Thank you, Father. We're able to meet here together. We're able to encourage each other. We're able to see the next generation call upon you. Lord, I pray you bless this tithes and offerings. I pray you meet all of our needs. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.